Hello everyone, it's me, Andrew. I'm here at Star Cottage Studio in the bead room. Hopefully you all have been having a good week so far um, and that you are having a happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, I am a smidgen a wee bit late because it's my mom's birthday. So I gave her a call and wished her a happy birthday. Um, hopefully you all are doing well out there. If you're watching, please let me know and say hello and where you're tuning in from. Um, yeah. So yesterday, if you missed it, uh, we had a really great, uh, live. We had a live with Linka from Raven's Journey. Um, and it was a really awesome, uh, interview and if you didn't see it check it out uh go on over to um, our youtube page for allegory gallery and you can see that if you missed it and, and watch it on the replay so hopefully if you're not watching this live you're gonna have fun with the replay uh, i can't stay on too too late because i have a meeting right after this oh, today's been kind of a uh, an emotional day um, but a good one. I mean, it's been good. Um, when I got back, we had to do a lot of, um, I had to do a lot of catch up and, um, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I, I just kind of want to relax and watch TV and, and become a blob, but, um, you know, needs must. Um, so I've been going around the house and kind of tidying up. I haven't really... It's kind of like lazy cleaning, but really it's just getting organized. Um, before we left uh, the cottage, or before I left for Tucson, I've been gone for uh, for that trip for almost 20, 22 days, I think it was. So it was a long trip and it was actually gonna be longer. So this is kind of the abbreviated version that I did because originally I was supposed to go to the ECU conference and then um, go from there and go down to Cynthia's, go over to Cynthia's rather, and then, um, and then spend time with the family there before and then stay longer after. So I was gonna be gone for almost uh, a month if, I think actually longer than a month. So um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be back. I miss my family, but I am excited to be be home, be with the cats. Um, I see a couple people are watching. Teresa's watching. Hey, Teresa. Julie's watching. Hey, Julie. I met Julie over in Tucson. It was nice to meet you in person. Uh, Marianne's watching. Hey, Marianne. Um, my mom is doing pretty well. They're getting ready to sell. Um, they have a house that they've been fixing up uh, for the last 10 years. Um, and uh, they've been trying to get ready to sell as an income property kind of thing and um, or an investment property. And they're finally ready to do it. So that's exciting news. Very excited for all of them. Um, my mom and my dad. It's been harder because they're on a fixed income. And, um, you know, they're getting older. So it's a little bit trickier to do things sometimes. Um, but my brother's been helping them. And they're finally, finally, finally getting it put on the market and i wish them lots of success and luck and hopefully they get a bidding war and um you know they get everything they deserve that they put into the property so that'll be good um julie said that was a great live learned a lot yeah it was really fascinating um it, you know, I've been in the bead world for 20 plus years at this point, and um, I thought I knew a lot about uh, the manufacturing process from the Czech Republic beads, but there are even things that I learned last night. So um, that was pretty cool. Um, and one day I hope to go and see it. Ronnie's watching. Ryan says, great show yesterday. Thank you for making it happen. 
you know, it was actually them and they wanted to come on and do the live. So um, uh, in the new, this new year, 2023, we're going to try to revamp um, the Allegory Gallery interviews. If you don't know what that is, it's a podcast where we um, talk to the different makers and different small business owners and different people um, and did interviews with them. And so I think it'd be cool to expand on the idea and do more of the meet the makers and and really get in and uh, talk about how things are made and where they're made and stories about who made them. Um, that's really what fascinates me. So I would love to, to do more of that in 2023. And we have plans for that. So keep your eyes peeled because we're excited about that. Julie says, same, Andrew. Um, Patty's watching from Oregon. Hey, Patty. Jermaine is watching. Hey, Jermaine. Susan's watching from Modesto, California. Are you the Su you're Susan that I met in Tucson? Uh, it's nice. It was nice to chat with you and um, Diane. I think Diane, is that right? Um, I had a lovely chat with both of you, and hopefully you all made it back to California safe and sound, and that you enjoyed your trip. Julie says they're in Florida. Um, yeah, my parents are both still in Florida. Um, there is a Titusville, Pennsylvania, and some friends moved uh, recently to Titusville, Pennsylvania, so it's a little bit confusing. Um, cause I was talking to them about it and they're like, oh, we're, we're in Titusville. And then I told them and then they were like, oh, I don't know that part. And I was like, oh, I meant in Florida. So, and I don't know if there's a connection between the two. I know that the Titusville in Pennsylvania was kind of built on oil money, which when you think of like the oil boom and stuff, at least I know, I don't necessarily think of Pennsylvania, but I guess early on, uh, Pennsylvania was like, you know, there was a lot of money in Pennsylvania. Um, Bonnie is watching. Hi, Bonnie. Um, Bonnie says, hi, glad to have you back and on Valentine's too. Yeah, um, I miss doing the kind of impromptu lives. Those were a lot of fun, taking people around. And I was thinking about ways that I can do that still, but stay at home. And so I've got a couple different ideas about taking you around the area area locally. Um, and, um, and if I seem like I'm out of breath, it's because I actually am. I was running around getting ready for the live. You know, when you don't do something for a while, it always takes a minute to get kind of back into the groove of things. And like all of my my regular tools that I use for my personal, they're still packed up um, in the car. And well, maybe not in the car, but um, they're packed up for Tucson. And so I was about to do the live and I was like, well, where, where are my tools? So I had to scrounge around real fast and... Um, find some tools to work with. Marian says, hope they sell it in for a ton of moolah. Me too. They definitely deserve to take it easy. My dad, he still works um, cutting lawns and he's getting, it's getting harder and harder um, for him. So it would be nice if they didn't have to, to work anymore and could just kind of focus on, um, you know, their own interests. So that'll be good. And hopefully um, it sells quickly. And um, and yeah, and Jermaine said, yes, yesterday's live was awesome. And um, Marion said, last night was nice. Anissa says, hi, Drew. My name's Andrew, but you I guess you can call me Drew. Just don't shout it out when, if I'm about to get hit by a truck because if you go, Drew, watch out for the semi, I might get hit. So, um, uh, hello. Um, 
she said that she tried watching the video, but it kept having trouble. Um, we'll try watching it on the replay because um, it seems like things have a way of smoothing out after they're recorded. So hopefully when you go and try to watch it again, you won't have any problems. Bonnie says, watching the live yesterday was fun, but it made me want to eat hard candy. Um, yeah, I like hard candy too. Susan says, yes. And yes, Diane, loved meeting you. Yeah, it was really nice. That's one of the things that I've missed about doing the shows is kind of having that human connection uh, with people. It's been three, well, I guess last year I did a residency um, but we're still kind of in the, you know, P word, not that P word, the other P word times. And um, I don't want to say certain words because apparently if you say certain words, your videos get flagged. So I don't want to get in trouble. But as we're coming out of this global event, um, it's been nice to reconnect with people and, um, you know, kind of get back to living. So um, that was really nice to meet people and connect faces with names. And um, of course, share the goodies that we brought. Um, I didn't get to finish everything before I left. So hopefully I'll have a, a big batch of new stuff. And we're actually going through, um, going through all of the stuff that I brought back, which I didn't think I got that much because we were kind of on a budget this year, but apparently I got more than I thought, um, which is good, but kind of daunting. And um, we've been trying to take things a little bit more relaxed with our pace of living. Um, William and I were talking about things and, uh, you know, I think we get into this thing where we just get, we're always working, we're always working. And I don't mind it. I actually like, like to keep busy. I feel weird when I am not working. So um, I'm making something or thinking about something or doing something. So a part of this kind of new year, um, we're still on that new year kick is um, kind of finding a little bit more balance. So when I got back, my instant uh, kind of modus operandi, as they say, I'm probably saying that wrong, is to kind of just work, work, work. And so uh, instead I took things slow and we watched some, some movies and um, kind of caught up and at a more relaxed pace. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll build some good habits. That's always the hardest part. You have to do something. I think they said something 20 something days in a row um, for it to stick. And so, I don't know. We're, I'm gonna get back into walking because uh, I was walking every day for a long time and then kind of took a break. But anyways, so we kind of took it slow. We've been taking it slow. We watched this movie or the show called this The Last of Us, The Last of Us on HBO. And I was like, oh, zombies. Um, but there are people talking about it. And um, so I was like, I wonder what this is about. So I watched it. And I think the second episode, I cried my eyes out like the whole time and was like, yeah, that was unexpected. And I'm kind of like tearing up just thinking about it. But um, yeah, Susan says, love seeing and touching and buying all your amazing stuff. Yeah, thank you, Susan. I think you got one of my word paintings. I can't remember which word you picked out, but thank you. And you got some other goodies. Um, Anissa is talking to Julie. Susan's watching, hey, Susan. Lorraine's watching, hi, Lorraine. Lennis is watching, hey, Lennis. I, um, there's something in the mail, maybe in the next few days, but I, we got it and started packing it up for you. Um, Susie's watching, hey Susie. Harry's watching, hey Harry. Um, Jermaine says, balance is really important. Says a Libra, I am also a Libra. 
Um, usually the way that I achieve balance is I just do everything that one way super hard. And then I'm like, well, this is balance, right? Um, you know, however that works. Um, Bonnie says, I started walking again too. It's been warm here. So sadly today there was rain. Yeah, it was beautiful here. It was a spring day, really. Um, it was warm and the flowers have started blooming. We have crocus, winter aconite, and um, snowdrops blooming. And I see, excuse me, here at the cottage, um, there are daffodils shooting up. And I saw a couple blooms, not fully opened yet. So I guess buds. Um, and so um, I'm excited to see them, but I'm also a little bit, um, I'm a little bit nervous, to be honest, because sometimes when we have a really like mild uh, February, we get hit really hard in March or April. Um, so hopefully, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's not going to be any more super harsh weather. Um, because I actually like the sun and I like flowers. And I was actually thinking about, you know how whenever you go on a trip, you're like, oh, well, I that wasn't so bad. I should just always be on trips. And, but also kind of like missing home. So I was thinking about where I would go next. And um, I had wanted to stop in um, Kentucky uh, for the Appalachian Craft Center there and do an interview with them. Um, so maybe closer to the end of the month, we'll, we'll do that because I'm going to spend a couple days down in North Carolina. So I'm going to be kind of in that area anyway. Um, and my friend has a restaurant in Bria, Kentucky called Noodle Nirvana. And, uh, we met originally in 2018 during the American Small Business uh, championship, which we were all, we were uh, each selected for our state. Um, and so I uh, would love to actually try it out. Every time I see her pictures, May's pictures of the food, it just makes my mouth water. So one of these days I said, I'm going to pop up um, and surprise them. Um Julie says it's a really good show. Lena says, whoop, you can add it in my order if you want. I don't do anything with shipping, so I'll ask Barb tomorrow about it. Um, so hopefully it didn't go out already. Marianne says the last of us was filmed around Edmonton. Oh, well, that's interesting. It was, it's kind of, um, I don't know. I uh, I have to suspend my sense of disbelief sometimes when I watch shows because they'll be like, oh, we're in blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, that's not the trees that grow in blah, blah, blah. And so anyways, that's one of a me thing that I have to kind of let go. Jermaine says, have you been in the cottage a full year now? Um, we got the cottage in 2021, so in the end of April, beginning of May, it'll be two years, actually. Um, we've only really, really been in the cottage working for a little over a year, um, because in the beginning, we couldn't really, there wasn't much. I mean, I, I brought my jeweler's bench and set it up and... I had one light over me and I worked um, on the jeweler's bench. I didn't make anything that was any good. It was kind of terrible, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I did that and the rest of the place was so dusty and I didn't have any supplies. So I had to bring them with me whenever I came to the cottage. But yes, it's a mess. So. So we're going to have to go through and spend a couple weeks just kind of tidying up. Um, I feel like before we go to any trade show, it's like a bomb goes off and there's all this energy that goes into getting ready for a show. And then when you come back, you're kind of like euphoric on cloud nine for having done this show. And then you come back and then you see the aftermath, uh, the, the wake of what you left behind. 
and it's a little bit uh, extra. Um, Patty is, said, um, bulbs are popping up, but got snow last night. Oh no. Yeah, when we were driving through Tennessee, um, it started. I started seeing daffodils along the road. Of course, it's much warmer down there, but I'm like, it's February, y'all. It's still February. Um, uh, Anissa says, what flowers are a bee and butterfly attraction? Um, so that's a really interesting question, and it's something I actually think about quite frequently. Um, what I would recommend is looking up what your zone is and kind of figuring out where you're, um, where you're located and talk to the locals there um, and about starting a pollinator garden um, because sometimes there are certain flowers that attract them but actually don't sustain them. So it's actually really good if you look up your, your native plants wherever you are um, because those are gonna sustain the local um, pollinator um, numbers and uh, you'll have bees and butterflies and all kinds of things. Um, so you kind of have to just uh, look where you are um, because it's different for everybody. Um, Marion says 25 and a few snowflakes. Oh no, y'all can keep it um, over the snow actually. So I'm excited to be back and have sunny skies. Harry says 50 and rain here. Um, most of the trip out and back, there was rain and that was not fun. But then when we got to the desert, it wasn't super rainy. So, um, yeah. Um, Lena says, like UC Sunnydale, there is part, is part of UCLA. Um, oh yeah. Well, that actually makes sense. Um, since that's in theory supposed to be, um, in the same place, right? In California. Or I don't remember where Buffy's supposed to be. I know that there is one that was supposed to be in, um, in like San Francisco. Or there was one show that was supposed to be in Pittsburgh. And it was like... Who thought that that location would be um, a good replacement for Pittsburgh? Because Pittsburgh has a lot of rivers and hills. And whatever place they picked was like the flattest of the flat. And I was like, uh, that, uh, I'm having to suspend the disbelief, y'all. Um, Harry says dandelions are a great source for bees early in the year. Um, yeah, so dandelions are super important. And um, I know some people don't like them and they spray them and stuff. Um, I love them and I think it, I love them. I, um, in the yard, it just makes me happy to see the bright yellow flowers and, um, you know, grass. Uh, I don't really have, I don't know. I don't really care about grass. I like the the flowers better. So if I had a yard that was completely dandelions, I would I wouldn't mind at all. Um, Bonnie says, "Did the cats miss you?" Um, I think they did. Maybe. Um, you know, it's hard when you're away and then you come back. Um, and so it's taken us a minute to kind of get back into a pattern. Um, and um, when I went down to North Carolina, Cynthia has a cat named Pearl. Um, I don't know if y'all knew that. I know y'all know about Marty, but Pearl um, doesn't get the fanfare that Marty does. But um, anyways, Pearl was super excited to see me. And um, she was purring and purring. And I couldn't hardly get to any sleep because she was kept giving making biscuits on my head and she's got sharp little claws and my arms got all kind of scratched up. So I know at least Pearl missed me as far as my own cats. They're like, oh, you're back. White daddy was here. Don't worry about it. Um, Harry says, yes, the yellow is like suns and leaves are edible. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because I've been for a while, I was really on a kick for foraging. So um, 
uh, there are certain times of year where they're more, uh, they taste better. So if you get the dandelion greens when they're young, that's good. Early in the spring, they're nice and tender. You can cook them up. Um, the, all the recipes I saw, you're supposed to use bacon grease and other stuff, but since we're vegetarians, we don't use that. Um, but you can do other things and lightly saute them and they're super good. Um, and then late in the fall, they get sweet again. But if you get it in the summer, they're super bitter. So anyways, I could talk about foraging for hours and hours and probably have at some point. Um, Marion says you can make dandelion wine. Um, somebody can. I have made it and tried it. And I thought it was super disgusting. But that's me. Um, so I, I don't like to poo poo on other people's parades, but I did something wrong or did something. Cause what I made was, was I basically dumped it down the sink after, um, and then Cynthia tried it and I had a similar reaction. So I don't think, um, I don't think that that is, was, was for me. Maybe somebody else loved it. Um, but for me, I thought I was going to uh, have another P word. Of, um, Lena says that makes uh, poopy or that's what poopy says, making the biscuits. So cute when older cats still need. Yeah, I think it's charming. I love it. All right. Before it gets too late, um, I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to look at some check glass and make some stuff. Um, I didn't really come in with a super fleshed out idea of what we would make today um, just because we've been so busy. So I figured we'd do something with spring. And then I, I saw this amazing article online and I can't remember where it was, but it was about the last um, factory in New York City that makes silk flowers, like real silk flowers by hand. And so I was like, oh, well, we'll make earrings with the check glass and silk flowers. Um, but then I can't find the silk flowers here. So we must have moved them in preparation for the show that we went to and must have hid them away somewhere because I can't find them. And I was like looking behind me and they're not behind me. Um, so we will, um, and if I sounded like something just happened to me, it's because I'm trying not to shotgun sneeze all over the camera. Um, and so, yeah, fun times. So, um, yeah, so I was going to do something using silk flowers in the check glass, but we'll have to maybe save that for another day because I can't find the check glass, uh, or I have the check glass flowers, but I can't find the silk flowers. So... Stay tuned for that someday, maybe. All right, let's flip this around and get busy because I have a meeting directly after this. So um, so I can't stay over. Normally, it doesn't matter how long I stay on, really. Um, I mean, it kind of does if there's somebody going on after. But um, usually, we, uh, we just kind of do what we do. And that's fine. All right. Did you miss this table? I guess not because Boyne was still doing lives. It's only me that's been out of the loop. I guess that's fine. When I was down in North Carolina, I found this seed pod. And it's from a Kentucky coffee bean plant. Um, and... Um, uh, we were reading the book, or I was listening to the book club book on my way up, which probably wasn't the best of ideas. I was kind of in a funk, and then I was reading this book where basically one bad thing happens to the main character after the other. Um, I mean, I liked the book, and I thought it was well written, but it was definitely a harder read. But anyway, so they mentioned this, and I don't know why I'm bringing this up other than I just saw it in front of my face, and so I thought I would show you this in case I didn't show you already. All right, so I picked out a couple different strands to work with. Um, 
Um, Susan says, wow, it's huge. Yeah, I don't know if, um, oh, it's opening. I was like, I don't know what's inside. I hope it's not anything bad. Well, I'm just talking about like not introducing invasive species, but anyways, it's hard, but it's cracked. And it wasn't cracked before, so that's interesting. Well, we'll see what new things come out of this thing. And it's going to be like that show. Going to get... Um, Lena says, would be cool for a texture mold. Could be. Um, Amanda says, it looks leathery. It kind of is. All right. So these are the check last strands that I picked. I thought they were really bright and colorful. Um, Linka was talking about um, picking the glass. And she's always had a great eye for the colors that she supplies. Um, and if you are interested in any of the strands of Czech glass, um, I tried to pull from strand or from Hanks that we had a couple of strands on there. So if you are like, oh, I love that, um, watch the other videos and there's still time to make your claims. So if you like what you see and you want to do it as well, then uh, we still have more of them available. So just keep your um, eyes out for that video and or those videos because it was three days worth of check glass that he went through. And if you if you need anything, uh, send us an email. That's info at allegorygallery.com. It's not all on the website. Um, it's a trunk show, so it doesn't really make sense to be um, uploading everything from the trunk show. So if you're interested, go on over and catch up on the replays of those videos. Um, they're super fun anyway. So definitely do that. Um, and yeah, so info at allegorygallery.com. Hopefully if William is watching, he will bring me a drink because I forgot a drink and I am super dang thirsty. It's different not, you know, when you're at a show, you're talking a lot, but you have breaks in between sometimes. And so anyways, it's different being back, y'all. Bonnie says, try planting the seeds inside. I might, but the thing is, is that I don't want to introduce any invasive species to Pennsylvania. And then they're, they'll be like, well, that, that invasive species took over and um, now they have a coffee bean plant problem because of somebody named Andrew Thornton. I don't want that to be my legacy. Um, Anissa says, I'm still wanting the vintage. Well, we all want things and I definitely want more vintage. So we'll see what happens. There's stuff online if you haven't checked it out, www.allegorygallery.com and you can go over there and see some of the vintage glass and vintage plastic and vintage pearls and vintage this and vintage that. So check that out um, if you haven't already, because there's uh, quite a lot up online already. Uh, but if you're talking about my personal collection, we'll just uh, go, you know, we'll see how things go. I don't, I am like a dragon and I sit on my dragon horde and I don't ever want it to go away, but maybe one day. Um, Bonnie says, hopefully Mike is watching and will bring me some Chinese. Uh, we had Chinese last night and it was good. Um, uh, so yeah. All right, so these are the colors of Czech glass. I think I might separate these out into two different designs. I've got this one and it's that lovely, very peri kind of opalescent glass, um, which I like. It's got a little bit of um, nice milkiness to it. And it's got a gold luster, which she talked a little bit about how they apply some of the finishes. And I think that's really fascinating. Um, and one of the processes that she described is called fuming, 
which is uh, surprisingly dangerous. I guess it's not that surprising, but it's super dangerous. Um, and there was a guy who used to go to the bead and button show and he would make last beads and he didn't check the seal on his chamber and ended up dying because of that. So um, it's super important. Like she was talking about the kind of safety standards to have those things so that, um, you know, things aren't, they are not dangerous. Um, in one of the studios that I worked in, uh, they would light a stick of incense and they said, if you can smell it, then that means there's a leak. So, um, so if you didn't smell it, that was good. If you did smell it and got a big whiff of smoke, that meant that there was a leak in the seal and that they couldn't do this, um, this process. So anyways, I thought that was interesting. Um, William says, what kind of drink? Um, something delicious um, and hydrating because my mouth feels dry like the Sahara Desert. Um, Michelle says, hi, everyone. Just got back from the doctor's appointment. Hopefully everything went well. And Amanda says that she is just tuning in as well. And happy Valentine's Day, everyone. So I think I'm going to make these. And um, the what I'm going to make, the first thing I'm going to make is I call these my little money makers. And... Um, Sometimes all you need is just a bead and just call it a day. I'm sure you all know how to do this, but I'm going to do this anyways. Um, and sometimes when I, I look at it, a kind of a pricey, these are affordably priced, but sometimes when I look at something that's a little bit more expensive, I rationalize it by saying, well, I could make a pair of earrings and that would help uh, pay that off. So sometimes that's how I do it, or I'll, I'll make a couple pairs of earrings if it's like super expensive. Um, but, um, and what I do is just simple. And maybe this is, maybe y'all are gonna, you know, this is like the two second thing. So I have a head pin and I'm gonna test it. Make sure it doesn't go through the bead. If it goes through the bead, then you can just take like a little seed bead or something and put that on the end. Sometimes I'll do that anyways, but sometimes I just want something really simple and clean and I don't wanna overly, uh, I don't wanna add too much. I wanna keep things streamlined. Um, and uh, it's nice when you can do that. You don't have, um, you can, um, you know, just making something simple that's not gonna be, um, too, too fussy. Um, when I first started designing jewelry, I kind of, um, I got, um, I don't want to say that they were product endorsements, but I got people who would sometimes give me different supplies to work with. And so I would work with those things. And some of those were very technique based. And so I would throw every kind of technique that I could in those early designs. And so it's kind of like the everything in the kitchen sink kind of mentality. But um, so as I've gotten more mature as an artist and I don't have to do all these, these different kind of product placement things, um, I tend to make more simple things and maybe, maybe not, I don't know, simple for me, but I'm not like braiding um, all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is round nose pliers. Um, now, I'm also going to mention that I wire wrap very differently than most people out there, but it works for me, and I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I think it would break my brain a little bit to try to relearn this. Um, but anyway, so I fab my bead. I've strung it on my head pin. I go up about half an inch to a quarter of an inch, depending on where I put this, depending on where I make the loop, it will determine the loophole size. So if I do it close to the tip, it's gonna make a small loop. If I do it close to the hand, it's gonna make a great big hoop. And sometimes, you know, you need a big hoop. Sometimes you need a little hoop. Um, so it just, most of the time I have a spot 
just in there that I found. And if you ever have any issues where you're, you don't have that kind of spot embedded into the pliers, you can always take a Sharpie and just make a little mark and use that as your guide. You have to reapply it because as you work with the wire, it will wear off. Um, which is good because if your pliers were constantly coated, every time you change your, you know, change your design and need a different size thing, it, it would be uh, hard. Um, and if it does give you a little bit of problem, you can always take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and use that to remove it. Just make sure to put a little bit of WD-40 back into the box hinge so that uh, your pliers keep moving smoothly and you don't uh, ha get them stiffened up. Because sometimes if you use like um, like the alcohol to clean, it can cause it to dry out. Um, and that little bit of, there's a little bit of oil that's um, usually inside of your pliers and that helps keep things from rusting um, and to keep things moving uh, smoothly. So anyways, go up a little bit, about a quarter of an inch to half an inch, and then just bend it over. So you have this little, little droopy shape, and then you put your round nose pliers back in there, and then you key, you walk that wire all around up until it's a little, little person doing a karate chop. They're like, hi ya. And then you take that, and you don't want to squeeze really hard with this technique, because if you squeeze really hard, you can dent up the, the wire and then that will create a weak spot. But then you're just gonna bend it over so that the little haya is at more of a 90 degree angle instead of like super uh, up, it's a little bit more at a, a perpendicular. Um, so like this. And then depending on your design, you can either attach this to your ear wire if you have something with a soldered loop um, I feel like it's sometimes easier to do it when you have that. And then I also have these ear wires, which are lever backs. And of course, do I have two different ones? Of course, I have two different ones, y'all. Anyways, I have these cute ones that have this little flourish right here. But then I looked over at this one and um, it is naked of the flourish. So anyways, I'll have to go hunt down the other ear wire. But the nice thing about this is that if it is, it does have a break in it so that it isn't soldered shut. So you can add this after if you want. Um, this is already opened up. Apparently, I was uh, making earrings and I forgot that I use this. So this is opened up already. But so I'm just gonna hold this shut and do it anyways. All right. Uh, Bonnie says, I'm actually working with some Czech glass with you. Oh, good. Um, if you do make anything with things you get from us, be sure to post it in our group. That's Allegory Gallery Design Challenges. And um, I'll post the banner with a link to that. Um, because it's always fun to see what people are making. So if you make anything with us, be sure to do that. Um, if you're posting on Instagram, tag us, um, and we'll try to repost it, you know, we'll help boost the signal, as they say. All right, so I've got these other pliers. I like using another set of pliers. Um, I was watching somebody else use it, um, do this without pliers, and um, they must have some strong fingers, but um, when you're working with this, it's good. I like to build that memory in. Sometimes I'll use my fingers if it's like super heavy gauge, but um, I don't know. So as I get closer to the tip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl this back in so that as it as I tuck this under, it's gonna nice and evenly sit under that coil. And I feel as though I have done this a million times for y'all and you're probably bored to tears but sometimes if we get a new person, it's always good. And there you go. I made a loose kind of messy wrap. And then since this is open already, I can slip this on. And these are double-sided. These little, little 
birdies and with jump rings it's good to close them where and this isn't technically a jump ring but that little loop on the end is a jump ring so if you have a jump ring never pull it apart like this because you'll distort it and create a weak spot but if you pivot it like this and open it up that way you can slip things on and then close them up and then it will keep its shape and it will also keep it sturdiness um then if there is a slight gap you can open it up and squeeze it with your pliers applying an even pressure and then when you bend it in place you're going to over bend and it'll snap back in place and you'll hear a little click and that'll you'll know that it's kind of securely um, in place and won't have like a loose spot and won't come undone later so that's a two second earring maybe a one minute earring um and my little tricks on wire wrapping um uh patty says oh cool my order from the trunk show should be here soon would love to post with mike oh good yeah um and if people are worry wondering about shipping we um uh, our shipper was out of town for a while and William was still packing things, but it's harder for him because he was coming here after work and doing it uh, and combining orders. That's the thing that usually takes the longest is combining all the orders. Um, anyway, so if there there is a minor delay in getting out, it's not like ridiculously long, but it is like an extra week and a half that she's been out or two weeks she's been out. So there is a minor delay on some of the packages that were going out. So if they are, um, don't worry. You'll get an email whenever it ships, usually, because we do it through Shopify now. And you can track your package through that. And, um, you know, you never have to worry again, really. Um, Bonnie says, I'm always mixing parts from many different TGBE sellers. I'm not sure if you want to share those. Um, I don't mind. Um, you know, if it's a certain somebody, then I'm not going to do it. But if it is the other 13 companies that we work with, um, 14 companies, however many companies, then I use their stuff on a daily basis. And so, um, yeah, feel free. And if we ever don't want to post it, guess what? We won't. So um, don't worry about that. I, I kind of have a rising tide mentality and I come from a publishing background. So I always credit people where I got them, where I got stuff from. And um, so, yeah, feel free. You don't have to just exclusively use our stuff. You know, you have to have at least something or at least get an idea from one of our videos. But um, anyways, I, I digress. Teresa says, makes a difference. I had to learn that the hard way. Um, Pam says, sweet. Thanks. Michelle says, I am not that great at wire wrapping. I have made about a million bajillion wire wraps. So... For the longest time, I was mostly known for these bracelets called fuzzy caterpillar bracelets. Well, I call them fuzzy caterpillar bracelets. And some of those designs had over a thousand wire wraps. So you get really uh, proficient at wire wrapping if you do that. Um, um, I'm really happy with Shopify. I always receive notices. I love Shopify. Um, and yeah, Bonnie says, I usually credit the parts where I purchase them from. Oh, good. All right. So, um, just make the, the other one for the other one. I'm not going to do it cause you've already seen it. Um, and I'm going to put that off to the side, but I thought I would make these really quick before I had to go. Cause I apparently talked more than I thought I would. And yeah, so anyways, the other thing, and I was, I promised I was circling back to it, 
But earlier I talked about the colors of the checklist. One of the things that I try to remind people is that this is glass that is kind of like a yarn. And what I mean by that is when you buy hand dyed yarn, you buy it in dye lots. And what that means is, you know, sometimes the colors will be exactly the same, but sometimes depending on the weather or um, who's making the dye, how long they leave it in the dye, um, you know, there's a lot of factors, but it can slightly change the color of the yarn that you're using. So when I started learning to do fiber arts, we went to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, which was probably not the best one to start because it's one of the biggest, um, but I just kind of jumped right in. And I made the mistake of buying one or two uh, skeins of yarn from each of the different sellers. And so I basically had enough to make half a scarf um, using that kind of straight, uh, straight stitch or whatever. And yeah, so, uh, don't do what I did. If you have a project, like if you're going to make a sweater, buy all the yarn at the same, some, same time from the same place. And what, why I bring that up is it's the same with the glass. Um, it's all being mixed by hand and by human. And, um, the reason why I thought of it is because uh, one of our customers, they bought some um, Czech glass when we first opened the store and they said, oh, I want this turquoise color. I said, okay. Um, and they said, uh, they they remembered where who we got it from. And so I went and I got the same thing. And they were like, I'm so mad. I'm so disappointed. They're not the same color. And this is maybe 10 years later that they asked for it. So there's a lot of different people who I know in our business that comes through the door um, throughout one year, let alone 10 years. Um, and so anyways, the, the moral of the story, which is not really a moral, is uh, to buy, if you're going to do a project where you need to make 100 of something, you're going to want to buy uh, as much as you can when you can, because if you wait, there may be differences. Things may sell out. Um, Linka was talking about these yellow flowers. And, you know, it, like she was saying is um, somebody bought 90 bundles of it. And if somebody does that, that can wipe somebody out. So just keep in mind that if you want something and it's available in quantity, and you're gonna make a bunch to get it all at that time because if you don't, there are maybe differences. And if you're okay with those differences, then don't worry about it. But if those differences bother you, then um, consider yourself forewarned, or not warned, because that sounds threatening, for, em for empowered. That's a made up word, for powered, F-O-R-E, powered, for powered. Maybe that's a new word. We're inventors today, y'all. We're inventors. Anyway, so I'm going to get back to stringing and not messing around. So the idea of this was I was going to string this bead point down and then put a little flower, one of those silk flowers, as a cap. And then take one of these beads and um, put it on the top. Um, but I couldn't find the silk flowers, y'all. So pre-informed, pre-formed uh, pre doesn't really sound that good, but I guess pre-formed, performed. Anyways, um, we can uh, talk about Latin roots. Um, so, I kind of like this flavor. Pam Pam G says, I had the same problem with yarn. I couldn't find the matching skein. Yep, and I did the same thing. And you could 100% see the difference when I stopped and when I started. And it's not just because I wasn't very good at, um, you know, at that. So anyways, there you go. So I was going to do that. I think I'm going to take this little white 
kind of pearlescent seed bead size, looks like a size six and put that on the tip. And this color has a great kind of, um, kind of a mid-century modern kind of vibe, maybe 70s vibe with that. It's not quite avocado green, it's more of a green, like a lime green and that really opalescent orange. And I think that looks good. Well, maybe, let's see. Cute. Mona says, or Von Monica says, cute. Thanks. I may do that, I may not. I kind of like this. What do y'all think of that? Anyways, we can come up with different permutations of this. I think what I'm gonna do, let's go off script, y'all. Oh, can I get a time check, Eastern time? Because I have a meeting after this. Is I have some 20 gauge bronze wire and I'm going to cut some off. This is probably six inches or so. And let's see. Let's do, um, make some, some coils here. And what I'm using is the tip of my round nose pliers and I'm just twisting this wire around. So it's making a little bit of a cone shape with a wire. I'm gonna press it down as I go. I'm not doing it too, too tight, obviously. Um, and I probably should get this a little bit tighter, but I don't wanna mar up my wire too much. And so I'm just making a little coil. And that makes like a little springy shape. And then I'll cut this using the, the flush side of my cutters. And I can use this. I'm going to tuck that little end in real good. And so I've made this little coil. And I can use that maybe. We'll check it out, see if it works. Or if it looks gross, then we won't use it. And maybe jazz it up like that. What do you think of that? Do you like that? Cynthia says, it's 6.06. .06. What time is the meeting? I want to go out for dinner tonight. Um, I don't know. I'm not in charge anymore. So I don't know. Um... So I think that's pretty cute. Um, so I just made that little coil and then I'm gonna make an earring and you just do that little head pin the way that um, we did at the first part and wrap this around and there you go, easy peasy. So there's something I call these like my little money makers because I'll do a bunch of different earrings, just sit down with some wire and a couple of beads and um, and then I'll have them on kind of like my, um, is that you, William? Is that you? Yeah. Uh, I started hearing something scrabbling around and I was like, uh-uh. If there's some creature creature feature up in here, it's not gonna be good. Thank you, Hallelujah! He got me a drink, y'all. Hello, That's... everybody. Oh, how's everybody today? <sighs> yeah, that was real polite of me just now, <laughs> gasping on the. Oh. There will be blood. No, he's like, what happened? You just had a, oh, you just had a drink. Stop acting weird. Wild. All right. So I'm just attaching this to um, the head pin. And there you go. I made that in 24 seconds. How about that? Uh, maybe more than 24. Maybe 25. And that's cool. It kind of looks like some kind of kitchen utensil. 
um, but in a nice way. There's this wonderful book and it's all about things made out of wire in the household. Um, William, talk to them for a second while I find that book. Talk to them for a second about how wonderful my earrings are. Go tell them. Don't you have to do a thing, Sam? Yeah, maybe whatever. He says, whatever. How's everybody doing? Hello, Marianne. Hello, Yvonne. Thank you for joining in with us today. Hello, Lennis. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Tessa. Menace says, which drink did you bring? He got a Gatorade. Gatorade Frost. Without the... Um, dyes because Andrew sometimes breaks out when he has food coloring dyes. Hello, Pam. Hello, Bonnie. Thank you for joining in with us and saying hi. Hey, Cynthia, good to see you. Hopefully we'll be seeing you again soon in person. Hello, Michelle. Just call me the librarian, y'all. I just got, I didn't even say anything about your earrings. I like this. I didn't see this one on the way. Mm, I like that think. one. I like that. You could even do a little stack of jump rings if you wanted it to have a little bit more movement. Jingle Jangle Station. This is the book that I was talking about. Um, <clears throat> this was recommended during a symposium that I attended. Um, Everyday Things Wire. Um, and it's a beautiful book. And it shows all these different um, wire things, like wire lampshades. There's this wonderful artist named Christine Baker who does, um, she doesn't solder, she welds her connections for, with wire. And so she builds these kind of, um, oh, what's that artist's name, Ruth? Um, She's an Asian American and she does these great big basket forms. Um, anyways, it went away. So there's this really beautiful book um, about wire utensils. And there are things like this, like this shape right here. And I think it would be really lovely to do as a jewelry piece. So there's another artist, Alexander Calder, and he made jewelry, if you didn't know. He's mostly known for his kinetic sculptures and mobiles. Um, but he did a lot of jewelry. And a lot of the jewelry is made with wire. Um, it was during uh, the wartime. And they didn't have, um, they were, were doing a lot of things with resources where, you know, they were um, for the military efforts. So a lot of his stuff wasn't made from sheet metal. It was um, made for with wire. And so I can see some of that kind of same little bit of um, weaving in his work. Um, Um, Pam says, there's a video on YouTube that shows how you can make cute little whisk earrings for the cook in your life. Oh, good. Um, Von Monica says, you know, I found you guys through TGBE a few months ago and want you to know I love you guys. You are both so awesome and genuine. I haven't been able to buy anything from you but yet, but I will. Well, thank you. Um, Lorraine says that she loves Calder's jewelry. Um, so I think there's a lot of visual interest here. And you can take some of those ideas um, from everyday kitchen utensils made of wire and apply them to your own jewelry. Like, look at this kind of cinching. That's pretty cool. And you could definitely incorporate this where you can do this. This is with a wire. This is basically what we did, except they extended the coils. And I'm guessing so that those, those coils there are to prevent it from whatever is being held, like a, maybe a milk crate. Um, 
these are glass carriers, which came in a variety of shapes and sizes, could hold up to a dozen glasses and tumblers. In French cafes, they were kept within easy reach on the counter. They provide particularly useful in Provence for carrying out the traditional uh, pa, uh, uh, pat, patis to people uh, playing uh, some French words in the square. <laughs> I'm sure William loved that as I butchered the friend. Um, but anyway, so basically that's what we did here, except it's more tightly coiled. So um, the author and title is here. Everyday Things Wire, and then there's a bunch of authors. So Suzanne Sleason um, and a bunch of other people. Um, but I can drop a link in the comments after you're on YouTube. I can drop a link to the book. Um, and I got it for super cheap. Um, so if you, if you get it and it's out of print, it's going to be more expensive. But I found this on Half Price Books for like so cheap. Now, this is a wire sh uh, hanger. You know, no wire hanger. Is that kind of wire hanger? Um and I think that these have a lot of possibilities as far as earring designs, um, where we take this kind of form here and then maybe incorporate some beads in here or doing something. Oh, this one. Everyday wire. Everyday things wire. See, William's on it. He's like on top of it. But look how cool these, these hands. This is for gloves. The wire forms were used for drying rubber kitchen gloves or to keep kid and fabric gloves from losing their shape if they got wet. Um, so you could definitely translate these into earrings. What's to say you couldn't whip up a jig real quick and make, if you're gonna repeat that and turn that into to earrings. But I think that there's a lot of inspiration all around us. And when you look at these kind of handicrafted or these handcrafted, not handicraft, but if you look at these handcrafted objects, there's a lot of a love and attention to detail and also design put into them. Like these one, these are um, these coiled wire candlestick sockets um, could be adjusted up and down. And these are kind of like courtship candles. Um, but anyways, if you wanted to do that, what's to say you couldn't do that in wire uh, for jewelry? So I think there's inspiration all around us. And I know that a lot of times we get kind of stuck into doing what people like I say to do. Um, but like if you wanted to do a heart, you know, you could form that out of wire and make it, out, you know, your own heart. Um, but anyways, so I was just, that came to mind as a source of, like, this is so cool. It's like the practical magic house, but made of wire. Um, a wire cage in the, in the shape of an American Victorian mansion. It looks like a birdhouse, but was never used as one. It probably was crafted for a window display at the end of the 19th century. I think that's so cool. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of different ideas all around us um, in ways that we can incorporate wire to replicate different forms just on a much smaller scale. And, you know, you could ha incorporate those beautiful little details into your wire work when it just is to, when you need something just to jazz up um to jazz up your uh you know your basic wire earrings so anyways there you go so i've got to go to a meeting so this was just going to be a fast one and then i ended up talking my brains out so there you go. We made not a half a pair of earrings, two half pairs of earrings.
And Bonnie says, it reminds me of the beaded 3D works you did a month ago. Yeah, I don't know where those are, but I made those. All right, let me flip this around. All right, so that was pretty simple and basic for y'all who have been watching for a long time. But the, for those of you who are new, I hope you uh, took some value in some of the tricks that I use to wire wrap. Um, this is a great way to use check glass. Um, I think that's really cute, but you know, to each their own. It's got kind of a, a funky kind of vibe with the colors, very boho. But I think that there's a nice little, that'd be cute. Um, Pam says, there is a wonderful Japanese wire artist who creates houses, flowers, branches, flower bulbs, and more. Oh yeah, if you really wanna fall down the rabbit hole, um, check out um, French uh, beaded flowers. And Heather did a little thing about them. Uh, and I have some somewhere around here um, of this very delicate, I don't even know what gauge of wire. It's like 36 gauge wire. It's like almost like a hair. And um, they use that and they twist it and you use that with seed beads to pass through the tiny holes. And... Um, they form flowers out of that and incorporate seed beads and it's a really beautiful look and as we get closer and closer to spring the start of spring it's kind of like spring here now i thought it would be good to show kind of those inspirations um you know in case you're interested in incorporating that into your work um pam g says thank you for sharing where the jewelry making inspiration can be found and used and then William posted a link to uh, the book. So if you want to get that book, use that affiliate link and we'll get a kickback. And that'll be good. Von Monica says, and Andrew, I watched one of your older videos a few nights ago and saw your last name. And then it clicks to your Cynthia's brother. I, LOL. Then it made me more sense when you refer, it made more sense when you refer to Cynthia. Uh, yeah, it's true. We are a brother and sister. Um, all right. So hopefully you all have a great rest of your week. I've got to go and go to my meeting. Um, hopefully you all have a great night. And thank you so much for all of your support. We could not do what we do without all of you out there. So I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you. We have so much gratitude for all of you out there. And before I sneeze, um, I think it's looking into this light, honestly, because I have these lights trained on my face. And I know they say you're supposed to look into the sun if you want to stop sneezing, but apparently I have a different reaction and it just makes me get the allergies like wild or something. I'm allergic to light. I don't know, turning into a Morlock. Uh, hopefully not. Um, all right. So on that weird note, have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.